Blog Talk Radio. Stevie B's Media Production is a part of the Shellcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Good evening. We have on the world listening to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie uh, Butler. And this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B Media Production, the Carolina Studio. 
in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege we bring your program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and teach and preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for any of my hosts on this show or any guests as well, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com, or you can give me a call at Steve B's Music Lecture Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ, and if you need any assistance in locating the congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks. Get out your Bibles and sit along with us here on What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, every fourth Tuesday of the month, we have a special treat that we have added to our production schedule. And this is the Kelly Fletcher Show. And she just began her show on last month. So this will be her second show. And so we look forward to her presentation and the subject matter that she'll be presenting during this next hour. All right. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Kelly Fletcher Show. This is Terry Jackson, and you're listening to a talk with my sisters on What a Word from the Lord radio show. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kelly Fletcher. And you're listening to A Talk With My Sisters. I'm thankful to God for allowing us to share another conversation that will hopefully encourage, edify, educate, and help women to improve spiritually, mentally, and physically. I am hopeful that it will do the same for the men in our listening audience. Candid but respectful conversation is what we're having this evening as we discuss the topic, My Sister's Keeper. I have two very special guests who have joined me this evening, Tressa Jo Franklin, who attends Walnut Church of Christ in Texarkana, Texas, and Katrina Brown, who attends Woodland Park Church of Christ in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome, ladies, and thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Uh, Before we get started, can you please introduce yourselves? And who goes first, Katrina? Okay, well, um, all right. Hello, good people. So I am Katrina Brown. Um, I am from Birmingham, Alabama. As stated, I attend Whitland Park Church of Christ. Um, professionally, I am the CEO of Creative Mind Law. Um, I'm the principal attorney there. We specialize in helping business owners trademark copyright uh, and come up with business solutions to protect their brand uh, and their business. And so I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. I'm always excited to share any type of platform with, platform with my favorite soul, so to trust them. So this should be very <laughs> interesting. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Thank That's you. awesome. Again. All right. My name is uh, Tressa Franklin, and I am originally from Dallas, Texas, and I relocated to uh, Texarkana, Texas about four years ago after marrying my husband, James Franklin. Uh, professionally, I go to work. I clock in and I clock out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am a mother, and my passion is just really uh, encouraging and inspiring uh, people to deepen their relationship and their walk with the Lord. And I'm just a pretty simple person, and, and I'm thankful to be on this platform with uh, my little big sister, Katrina Brown. <laughs> Thank you. Well, amen. And again, uh, I know I've thanked you both before, but I do thank you once again uh, for being here this evening. Um, Tonight's show is My Sister's Keeper. And just to start out, when I think of being my sister's keeper, the word responsibility comes to mind. Um, I have a responsibility to be of help to my sister spiritually, mentally, and physically. So one of my first questions um, to you both is, is there 
a responsibility that comes with being your sister's keeper? And if so, what does that responsibility include? Is it spiritual, emotional, physical, mental? Um, what, what does it involve? And Tressa, if you want to start, that would be fine. All right. Well, of course, from a biblical perspective, I think 100% we do have a responsibility to be our brother, our sister's keeper. When I think about all the one another verses in the New Testament, love one another, admonish, serve, forgive, speak truth, teach, exhort, there are so many Bible verses that uh, instruct us to be responsible for each other. And and just like you mm-hmm. said, when you when you look at the scope of it, it crosses every bridge, the physical, the spiritual, the mental and emotional. And so one hundred percent it does. Um uh we, we do have a responsibility to be our sister's keeper. Amen. Thank you. Uh Katrina? Oh, absolutely. I echo uh, what Tristan <laughs> said. I think that um, responsibility is, is definitely a factor. I think the other side of that coin is accountability, right? Um, and those things right. are not the same, right? And so there right. is this responsibility to make sure that we are operating the way God has called us to uh, to operate in how we deal with each other, right? How we speak the truth and love and how we admonish and how we cheer on and how we encourage and all of those things that kind of factor into having a sensational, uh, sensational, uh, successful sistership. But the other part of that right. is the um, accountability piece, right? Making sure that we hold each other accountable to what God has called us to do as well. Um, and, and not just because, you know, uh, I think sometimes when we get into responsibility, that can be taken to the point where we have to bear everything that everybody is throwing at us mm-hmm. at all times. And I think that that is right. totally contrary to what the scripture teaches. And so there has to be this this piece of accountability to balance out responsibility, in my opinion. Yes. Amen. I agree. Amen. Any uh, other thoughts, Tressa? Yeah. Yeah, Katrina, I love how you put that. You know, I think that when we talk about responsibility, I think that that might be the word that makes being a sister keeper unattractive, you know. But when you, mm-hmm. again, you, you, you're you highlighting accountability, it's really, to me, based on the love that we should have one for another, you know. And, then, you know, of course, the Bible talks about how can this is the way that the world will know that we are his disciples, how we love one another, you know, and so when you love a person, and you don't have to be in relationship with a person to love them, to want the best for them, you know, and so and part of that is the same thing that God does for us, and that's what, that that's in essence to me, what this, uh, being a sister's keeper is about, it's about uh, doing the legwork for God in each other's lives, you know uh, like Katrina said, holding each other accountable, sometimes that's admonishing one another uh, it, it comes in uh, so many shapes and, and, and the forms, but it's rooted in love, wanting the best for our sister. Right, right. And I, I think um, when when you mentioned the the accountability um, and the responsibility, I think sometimes um, when we try to do that uh, for our sisters or for one another it's not always well received. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it, it, it may seem like, oh, well, you're just you're just meddling in my business or that's why I don't mm-hmm. deal with you because you always try to <laughs> tell me what to do. And, and mm-hmm. that's really not it. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing this, as you said, out of love. I'm doing it because I love you. And I know what the scriptures teach us about like you said, loving one another. Mm-hmm. Well, I I agree with that to a certain degree because there are people who are doing it just to metal. There are people who are doing it well, to, be, <laughs> um, to 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 feel like they have one leg up over another sister. We and I think that's the part about the honest conversation that we don't have. We always operate as if the correction or the admonishment. It's always done from love, and I've experienced it where it has not been done for love. 
I think the mm-hmm. other side of that focus has to be on the receiving end, right? One of the things I've right. had to do as I've matured in, in my faith is be able to receive it even if it's not in love, and that's the hard part, mm-hmm. right? Because the truth mm-hmm. is the truth regardless of how it's right. said, right? Um, yeah, right. And, and, I, and what, what you cannot control is how a person says it. That doesn't mean that what they're saying is not factual or that it's not, mm-hmm. that it's not right, that it's not true. Um, you know, but God has commanded us on how we do things. And I think that a lot of times, because I grew up churchy, I grew up a church girl. Um, <laughs> well, I've, I've seen older women kind of use those scriptures to really be a tyrant to younger sisters, um, mm-hmm. to really be condescending, to really be belligerent and belittling. And I yep. think that's where that disconnect is. And so I don't ever give people the, the benefit of saying that all of you guys are standing in love because I know absolutely you're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's not the truth. <laughs> that's just the truth. Amen. I agree. Um, <laughs> and I think that we have to, we have to check. Cause I, I even when I'm, talking to some of the teenagers, the other women, I've had to call myself out and be like, hey, 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 you're, you're not doing that because you genuinely are concerned. You're doing this because this is an air of self-righteousness. You need to sit down somewhere. And so mm-hmm. that was, those are the <laughs> honest conversations that we have to have with ourselves. Right, right. I agree. I, I, was, I, I was thinking, Katrina painted the picture of both sides of that. You have the person that is you know, charging the person or holding them accountable to giving them truth. And then, of course, you have mm-hmm. the uh, the receiver. And I think that specifically because we are not all-knowing and we don't have mm-hmm. all wisdom, it takes a lot of prayer because sometimes I think we, we have a tendency to pride ourselves on having the truth, but mm-hmm. we don't have wisdom in giving that truth because it's not just about uh, giving it, you want it to be well received, you know, Amen. and so sometimes you have to press pause and pray and ask God, okay, God, uh, this 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 is what I have to give this individual, but I need you to orchestrate the timing because they need to be receptive. Of course, you have the right seed, but the soil has to be ready, you know. And then mm-hmm. what Katrina was talking about as far as the, the the recipient of that, I think it's it's a it's a a major sign of maturity when you can receive truth uh, in spite of offense. So, you know, I don't like the way you said it. And I might, you know, I'm the kind of person where, you know, I might not necessarily let you know that I'm receiving it, you know, Mm -hmm. but I still have to dissect it, you know, because you just got on my nerves, so I can't give this to you right now. (laughs) But, you know, behind the scenes, I still have to give ear to the truth that you just Mm -hmm. gave me. You know, and so mm-hmm. I think on on that end, for sure, that's a that's a sign of maturity when you can uh, sift out the truth in spite mm-hmm. of it coming by way of offense. You know, and and right. even considering that this person might not necessarily be uh, concerned about your well doing, they just might be a fault, fault finder. And I'm I'm sure we've right. all been in that position where you have an individual that. <laughs> It doesn't matter how much good you do, how much good mm-hmm. you say, they're going to try to to find some fault in it somewhere, you know. And right. so, of course, everybody doesn't necessarily. <laughs> it's not really about your well being. It's just about yeah, I have. I'm I'm I want to point out your flaws, you know. But right. still, we right. have to consider it. That's 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 maturity. Right. And right. it's funny you make that point, Trussell, because you know when you look over. I think it's Second Corinthians 12 where Paul, you know, uh, one of the, a lot of times we hear it preached when Paul is talking about he asked, you know, God to remove this thorn in his flesh three times. That's that's kind of what we mm. preach about. But before you get there, one of the things that Paul says, he says, I received this 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 curse from Satan, right? He 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 begins mm-hmm. it saying that this was from Satan. But then as he begins to understand who God is, and God tells him that it's, that that in his that his grace is sufficient. And then in his weakness, you know, God is, you know, God is glorified in that. He begins to take what was considered a curse, and he uses it for his benefit, what was considered a thorn, and uses it for his benefit. Mm-hmm. And so I would caution us that even when we receive information and the style is not what we prefer, maybe maybe mm-hmm. we know mm-hmm. we, based on the history that it may not be what we prefer, even if it's a message from Satan, even if it comes, mm-hmm. even if it comes from the wrong person. I will talk mm-hmm. to you to look at it the way Paul does because that does not mean that it will not 
be beneficial for you. It's just kind of like what Joseph told his brothers, you know, what you intended for evil, you know, God used it for the benefit of everybody else. Right. That's you, good. It may come off wrong, but that does yeah, not right. mean that, that God cannot transform you with, with malice intentions. Well, that's, that's right. Good. That's right. <laughs> I, I thought about when Paul said, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ mm-hmm. is preached. And sometimes Amen. when um, I, I've had it come mm-hmm. to me, uh, um, a friend, you know, had to tell me the truth. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the way she said it, but when she told me, I said, okay, okay. And I just had to sit back. And I thought, Lord, let me examine myself and see if this is what's in me. I don't yeah. care for <laughs> like I don't care for how she said it, mm-hmm. but it's something for me to look at because I'm on the inside. I don't see what people see on the outside. Mm. So I had to just kind of step back and, and take a look at myself and examine myself. Yep. So I appreciate that. Um, now, let me ask you this. The responsibility, is it limited to just the women in our family, friends, acquaintances, or does it extend to, to even other women that we, we don't really know? I, I think that being a child of God um, assigns you to be an example for everybody, not mm-hmm. just those that are in the kingdom. And I know that God has a different expectation from those that are outside the kingdom than in the kingdom. Uh, but one of the things that I think about is I believe that God made us, every woman is a helpmeet, a helpmate. Mm-hmm. And, because, mm-hmm. and, and I say that because she wasn't called a wife until she became one with Adam. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have our help meet nature, uh, purpose and design to help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the nature of the relationship shifts and changes based on, uh, no, the, the nature of the help changes based on the nature of the relationship. So I'm not going to help Katrina the way I would help my husband and vice versa because the relationships are different. Right. But, and and I kind of look at it in the same light of the kind of uh, 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 account of responsibility that I have for the saved versus the unsaved, right? So I'll give you an example. If if mm-hmm. I'm if I'm going to talk to um, a sister about rearing her children in the Lord, right? She's a sister in Christ, right. and I'm talking about her about having uh, godly standards for rearing her children, right? Now, I'm not mm-hmm. necessarily going to have the same approach to somebody that don't know the Lord because they could apply those same principles, but really what good would that do if they still don't know the Lord, you know? Right. And so I right. think it, I, I approach it differently, but at the end of the day, I believe that we have a responsibility, and initially that responsibility is manifested in me doing what I'm supposed to do and being who I'm supposed to be being an uh an example and not a sample <laughs> so to say Amen. you know yeah right that's good that's good teaching good yeah. sound teaching yeah. I'm concerned. right um I, right. I think i think yeah definitely echoing co-signing everything that trust has said um and also to just a, just a little bit to add to that is um it, you absolutely have a responsibility to people who are not your family i I say this all the time that God has assigned you individuals for your season, right? So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm in Birmingham. Tressa is in Texas. You are, uh, where are you located? South Carolina. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, I'm Indianapolis. in Indianapolis. So we so far apart, yeah. right? So the people that <laughs> right. you interact with every day, I'm not going to ever probably never meet these individuals, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, right. you know, God is so strategic and where yeah. he places us because he has assigned certain people to us. And so it's not just being re- being responsible to our sisters. It's to the men in our lives as well, right? It's not because mm-hmm. I think sometimes in a church we think that sisters can only minister to sisters. I don't know who told them that, but they mm-hmm. were. Um, that's yeah. the first. And then the second thing is, is that 
God has called us to, to, to really minister wherever we are in whatever environment mm-hmm. we're in. And so that means that the responsibility is not just limited to our households. You know, trust and I, right. you know, in full disclosure, our friends outside of just this, right? We, we've been, we've been mm-hmm. friends over, over 10 years. Um, yeah. We have a ministry together that we are a part of and we teach together. And we've had tough talks, you know, and, and there have been yeah. times I've called her about things and, she, you know, Tressa can correct you. With, you won't even know you corrected until you hung up the phone and be like, "What? Hold up! Did, did she just right. did she just get me together really quickly?" Like, and 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 but again, she was like that from the gate. It didn't have to be. Oh, we got to be friends for five years. That's who she is as a person. But she's not uh-huh. just like uh-huh. that, just with me, right? And so right. what what I, I say all that to say is that I think sometimes we think that we have to be homie G's before we can actually right. operate in what God has called us to be. But if you're mm-hmm. operating in your calling, you're operating in what God has called you to be, you're going to be who you are with, regardless of who you're with, right? And so and that, that means right. accountability mm-hmm. for everybody. That means responsibility mm-hmm. every man, every woman, and everybody else that God places in your life. Um, and and again, right. though, that that level of responsibility and that level of accountability is different. Like Trussell gave the example about me and her husband. Those those types of things are – so the level to which I'm responsible to you or accountable to you will be different. But nonetheless, I mm-hmm. still have a responsibility uh, to do what mm-hmm. God has called me to do, if that makes sense. It does. It does. It does. Any other thoughts on, on that question? You know, I, I think about, of course, when when, when – we first started talking about the the topic or just even processing and thinking about it. I thought, I thought about, of course, Cain and Abel, you know, Mm -hmm. and after he had killed his brother, God asked him, where is your brother? And of course, Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? Right. In essence, it was, he was saying, I'm not responsible for him. But of course, if we pay attention to the, to how things turned out, yes, he was accountable. And I thought about how easy it is for us to try to exonerate ourselves from being responsible, but that didn't Mm -hmm. work for Cain. It ain't going to work for us either. You know, so, and, 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 and the thing about it is, you know, you, you, we might not necessarily be, I mean, we're using the word responsible, you know, and in essence, I'm not necessarily responsible uh, for taking care of Katrina, but I'm responsible for caring for Katrina. And yep. and, and I think that that's what God holds us accountable for. You know, Cain, uh, if, if he had a cared for his brother the way he was supposed to care for him, he wouldn't have killed him. You know, and okay. so of course now we're not necessarily, we're not killing each other, but we still are responsible for giving one another life through the truth of God's word. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So Amen. yeah, just because you you exonerate yourself from the responsibilities does not mean that God is going to re- exonerate you from the consequences of you failing to take on the responsibilities that He gave you, because uh, Cain had. Uh, you know he got he got punished and 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 God cursed the ground right so we gotta sometimes you know I, I think about if we just really if if we have that mindset that I'm not responsible for him and what he does and you know how sometimes church folk can be we'll talk about you being outside of God's will we ain't praying for you we're not coming to mm-hmm. you to talk to you about anything but we're talking about mm-hmm. you amongst mm-hmm. ourselves mm-hmm. oh she didn't see that you know but we're not praying we're not right. even praying right but but um we we can do that but God is still holding us accountable and I just wonder if on the other side of that how you know we reap what we sow if we can right. connect the dots between the fact that our ground is not yielding the fruit that it once did, right? Just like Cain, mm-hmm. right? Because because I've 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 uh I've abandoned that responsibility that God gave me mm-hmm. for you and then I have mm-hmm. to suffer the, on this end, but I'm not really connecting the dots between the two. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good that's good preaching right there. <laughs> Well, we're gonna uh, we're we're gonna hold hold that thought uh, right here and go to a quick break. I, I'm really enjoying the conversation. So when we come back, um, Katrina, if we could start off with you, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah that works. That works. All, all right, and I'll turn it over to Stevie for the break. 
God, I thank you for all blessings from on high. Yeah. Every time I sin, I count up my blessings. I'm overwhelmed at all God He does for me. He's given me life, health, and strength, my friends. My family, every good and perfect gift supplies all of my needs. So I wonder how it makes God feel when we begin to doubt Him. And we ask Him why do the trials come our way. See, no matter what comes or goes, still God is in control. So where the rain will shine, here is what I have learned to say. Yeah. Why me? Why did you wake me up this morning? Yeah. Why me? Why is my family doing fine? Yeah. You see, I know somebody else is hurting deep inside. So I thank you. God, I love the way you lead, guide, and protect me. Even when things don't go the way I think they should. Still, you are my father, and I know you love and care for me. Working for my good But then I realize That there are those Who don't even know you They don't know about your mercy And your grace So I wonder to myself How could you save a friend like me That's when I smile and then I lift my hands Welcome back, and uh, thank you for sticking with us during the break. I hope so far you guys are uh, that are listening are enjoying the show. I know that I'm enjoying uh, the conversation between Tressa and Katrina uh, and my little two cents that I throw in there from time to time. Um, <laughs> but um, like I said before the break, 
uh, I would like to um, maybe start off with uh, Katrina and just to see if you have any comments um, on the question that we had prior to the break. Um, I know that Tressa ended it, um, but just wanted to see if you had any thoughts. No, no, no. She, okay. she, she, she did it. Just she summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. Okay. Okay. Amen. Um, I know the next question, it, it, we've already kind of touched on that, um, where uh, uh, we go to others, go to our sisters um, to talk to them. Maybe um, some will think that we're meddling or in their business. Um, and I know that, that that can be a challenge sometimes, but what are what are some other challenges that might come along with this uh, when you're going to your sister out of out of love you're, you're genuinely concerned uh, you're sincere um, what are some challenges that you can think of that might come up and uh, what suggestions do you have to maybe work through those challenges? Um, so I'll go first this time. I, I think, and so I always like to look at things from the, the, the person that's receiving and the person that's just doing the, the, the giving out the information, disseminating information, right? Um, mm-hmm. And dealing with the person that's, that's di- giving out the information or giving out the correction or whatever it is, um, I think the problem that we sometimes have is our own expectations of other people, right? Um, right. We we think even when we are genuine, let let's put aside malice. Let's put aside people who have you know in, in, ill intentions. Let's say genuine mm-hmm. heart person says, "I'm going to go to this sister and have this conversation. Um, it's the right time, right season, right everything, right." Mm-hmm. And they go, mm-hmm. and the person just doesn't even listen, continues to do whatever, or the person curses them out, or the person doesn't receive it. Uh, I think sometimes as as Christians, we think that we facilitate salvation, right? And I say this all the time. Yeah. We've got to get back to what the Word says. We are only mm-hmm. responsible for planting and water. It is God that, mm-hmm. that gives the increase. It, it is God increase, that facilitates right. salvation. It is God who Man. does the transformation of the heart. All we do is plant and water. And so if uh, if you look at what you're contributing as planting and water, you don't have time to be in your feelings when the response is not what you want it to be. <laughs> It's like uh, when when I'm studying the word, right, and I may get excited about it. I I, I get, trust me, you don't know me well, but trust me, when I get excited about the word, you cannot shut me up, right? (laughs) But there have been times I may call somebody and I'll be excited about something, and I'm like, girl, and then the Lord showed me, boop, and then they just be like, oh, okay. But they they they, they don't have the same excitement that I have because it wasn't Mm -hmm. their revelation. Right. right. And, and so right. if I judge what God has shown me based on somebody else's reaction, then I would never tell anybody mm-hmm. else about what God has, has shown me in the word. Mm-hmm. And so what I feel mm-hmm. like to say is as you're doing the ministry and as you're doing the mentorship, as you're teaching, as the Bible has commanded, really pull back from the expectations, your own personal expectations of how mm-hmm. you should react based on what you said, because people you got to understand, God may have sent you as the messenger, but this may may not be the season that the fruit is bare. you got to be right. okay with that. Right, right, right. Awesome. Right. Trust any thoughts? Yeah, I want to add that, you know, I think one of the challenges is our ability to meet people where they are. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think that, you know, if, if, if the problem is that you're not – standing up straight, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm coming to you to let you know that it's a problem that you're not standing up straight. But it's really not about the fact that I'm not standing up straight. It's the fact that I got bad knees or I got a bad back. Right. That's the place that you need to meet me, you know? And I think mm-hmm. that sometimes right. we, we we fail to meet each other where we are spiritually sometimes. You know, if if... If I have to have a conversation with a babe in Christ, I can't expect the level of maturity and commitment from somebody who's been in the body and been walking with the Lord for 20 plus years. I can't do that. Right. And so I think that exactly. we have to 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 consider 
really where they are and not be, and, and like Katrina said, we got to allow God to do the maturing, to do the, uh, the, 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 it's not our job to convict. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, you know? And so right. when we, when we, and so, and another thing that we have to stop doing is guilting people, you know, and, and right. making it about them disappointing us. It's not about you disappointing me. And I think that right. sometimes, especially when you're dealing with older, younger, you know, I was in a, um, early with my walk with the Lord, I had a wonderful mentor, the first person that scooped me up in the body. And I grew and I matured and I started separate, not separating myself, but I started doing things in the, in the church independent of her, you know, and mm-hmm. instead of her being happy that now I, I'm, I'm, I'm venturing out and doing things independent of her, she became critical and suspect of me. Right. And mm-hmm. so she was telling another mm-hmm. mutual friend, Tressa must be doing something that she doesn't have any business doing because she's not under me. It's not about me. Wow. And so we have to right. always make sure that God mm-hmm. is the one who's expecting this from you. It's not about you letting me down. You know, of course, you always want to make sure that you you want your, your mentors to be proud of you and your sisters and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's really not about um, you letting me down. That's not my job because the, the same truth that I'm telling you, I have to obey myself. Amen. Right, right. right. Amen. And that's Amen. something I was that's, thinking that's about ego. earlier. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. I was thinking about this uh, similar thing earlier today, and I thought my job as a Christian is to please God. Mm-hmm. I, I I can't I can't please everybody, um, but if I please God, then mm-hmm. I'll please he, He'll let me please the people that I need to. That he'll matter. open up their mind. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Amen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Tessa has this saying that she said. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go, go ahead. right ahead. Go right ahead. I was just going to say, Tressa has this saying that she has always said, as long as we've been friends, she's like, you know, it's okay to be able to eat off other people's plate, but you better learn how to fix that plate for yourself. And that, <laughs> as, as 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 women of God, that's what we all should be striving when we're ministering to women. We should all, you know, nobody that is a minister uh-huh. or a woman of God who teaches is worth their grain and salt if they're not directing people to have individual relationships with Christ. If I got to go through Amen. To get to Christ, then we still on the Mercy. old law, and there's a problem. There's Mercy. a problem. Right. No man that right. I know, no no man or God that I know would ever let an individual believe that they are the source by which they can speak to God through. That was the whole reason Christ came, right? Mercy. So that we would not have right. to go through right. man to have a relationship with Him. And so, when we when we're when we're when we're in the the role of ministering to people, when we're in the role of mentorship, when we're in the role of correction or whatever that role God has called you to, you need to understand. But yes, you do have a responsibility. Yes, there needs to be some accountability. But your whole goal is to make sure you're taking your hand and pointing up so that they know who they need to be talking to and encouraging the individual Amen. development and relationship that they have with Christ. Because the reality is these mentors, these elders, these preachers, when it comes for judgment day, you're not going to be able to say, you know what they said, brother, so-and-so told me. God going to say, no, uh-huh. no, 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 we're not bringing nobody up but you and me and this word. Yeah. I need to know when well, you're going to have a Man. given account for everything. And so Man, if, if your right. religion, if what you believe and how you feel is based in tied until brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, it's time to rethink this whole journey as a Christian, brother or sister, because your whole your whole walk ought to be tied to the word of God and to God himself. That's right. And, and people who are in ministry ought to be teaching people to have and fostering a genuine relationship and love for Christ that is outside of them. Anybody not doing that, they need to sit down somewhere. Amen. Right. 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 Amen. Mm. That's that's one thing my minister um, tells us when he, when he's preaching the word, he's like, you better not take what I say for it. You better get in that word Mm -hmm. and study Mm -hmm. and make sure the things that I'm saying are so. Because we don't have to stand for ourselves. So, if, if any they other behind thoughts or comments, you better go behind him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. 
Right. I, th- I think two words that come to mind with the struggle of being sister's keeper is influence and control. You know, and, and like I said yeah. from the beginning, I think that the, the, the initial responsibility that we have is to dot our own I's and cross our own T's. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect, but we can't be hypocritical counselors. You know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. can't we can't uh tell them to do as I say and not as I do, first of all, you know. Right. But 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 the goal is to be able to influence our sisters towards righteousness, not control mm-hmm. them and manipulate them. God don't even control us like that. You know? Right. He doesn't control right. us. He doesn't we're not robots, you know, so we have to leave right. room and understand and sometimes, you know, you have to step back and, and question yourself, well, if I have such a good relationship with this individual, but they don't listen to anything I say, maybe I need to question my influence and see what am I, maybe I'm doing mm-hmm. something wrong. Maybe I have some hypocritical conversations or behaviors or something that, that makes them not really take me that serious. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. Good stuff. Great. I, I, I've had friends, and I know this about myself, like Katrina said, I'm, I'm very consistent when it comes to that. And and, and if a person uh, does not want to be held accountable, in love, of course, then most of the mm-hmm. time they won't be back. They won't consistently right. uh, be in relationship, up close and personal relationship with me because they right. don't want to be held accountable. And, and and that's right. what I attach myself to. I attach myself to individuals that that can uh, counsel me, instruct me, admonish me uh, in the Lord, you know, because I, I, I don't know it all. You know, I don't know it all, right. and I, I don't have all the answers. I'm not always right. And so I don't need just a homegirl. You know, I don't right. need somebody right. to just go along with whatever I say. I need somebody right. to look beyond our friendship to see Mm -hmm. what I need in that moment. And sometimes that means that in love, I can't agree with you, sis. I can't go along with that. That's right. That's right. I definitely Mm -hmm. agree with that. that, And that's that's, uh, one thing I think we need, even if it's just one person, if it's Mm -hmm. just one friend Mm -hmm. that we have that does that for us, and that holds us accountable, and no, I I, I, I got to check you on that. Absolutely. If there's one, then that's precious. Amen. That's precious to me. Amen. Mm-hmm. So we have just a, a few more minutes left, but I'm going to shift gears a little bit here um, and talk a little bit about support. Um, I read an uh, article uh, in Forbes entitled, Why Women Don't Always Support Other Women. And Dr. Sean Andrews wrote it. Um, She mentioned one of the reasons women don't always support other women uh, is due to the obstacles women face in their career, corporate environment, and they fought hard to achieve this success. Uh, they have the attitude of, I figured it out, and you should too. So mm-hmm. it often seems like there's a competition that can bring about jealousy and envy um, instead of building each other up and supporting each other. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you if you guys have heard this before, but do you agree with that? Well, with with your thoughts on that topic? Um, you know, <laughs> I think that uh, the whole I made it, you got to pull, you got, now it's your turn, you got to learn the hard way, pull yourself up by your boots up. I think that's the biggest bunch of junk that we could ever talk about. <laughs> and, and I say that because what it does is it perpetuates the, the, the biases and the stereotypes if we're talking based on corporate America where you have women mm-hmm. still making less than men in the year of our Lord 2021, right? We perpetuate. Mm-hmm. I, I read there's, as an attorney, there is a journal uh, that comes by our National Bar Association publishes, and it was this whole thing about why women lawyers 
are not partners, why we don't make partners at big firms. And one of the things, and it was written by a woman basically saying that we're asking for too much. We, we have to choose between motherhood and actually being a partner in the firm. And I thought to myself, yeah, you're continuing to perpetuate the the, gen, the the stereotypes that so many female lawyers are continuing to have to face every day that says that we can't be mothers and be good lawyers, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, and the same is true. The same is true in the body, right? If we're going to talk about this from a spiritual level, you have women mm-hmm. who, uh, in, in their quest to mentor, it's always about learning the hard way, or it's always about, well, I did it, and you can do it too. And if, if I, I don't, you cry about that because I didn't hang my head low and da da da. And I'm just like, yeah, because you you too old and far removing, you don't remember hanging your head low, and so now you painted a picture that is not true. Um, <laughs> And when you when you do things like that and when you have those types of behavior, you don't leave room for honesty and um, authentic reaction to life happening, right? right. You don't leave room right. for people to be human. You don't leave room for confession of sin. You don't leave room for people to be transformed and convicted. You don't leave room for imperfection because you have created a facade of perfection based on what you have done. Um uh-huh. And, and the reality is nobody has gotten anywhere without the help of somebody else, whether it's spiritual or or right. in corporate America. Uh-huh. Um, and so right. I think you lie to yourself pretending otherwise. Uh-huh. Right. Right. Agree. You know, I, I think I think people can advise you based on what they think is best for you, right? Mm-hmm. But they can't count the cost of what you have to pay. Right, because it's kind of right. like an iceberg, right? You look at an iceberg, it's just a little bit on top of the water, but it goes miles and miles deep at the bottom. And that's what mm-hmm. the other people can't see, you know? And so mm-hmm. you have to, when, when I think about uh, those mindsets, um, people can't count the cost for you. They, they don't know the sacrifices that you have to make. They don't know, but but people have different reasons. You know, sometimes right. that 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 crab barrel type of mentality uh, comes from a place of insecurity. Sometimes mm-hmm. it comes from a place of uh, inferiority or superiority complex. You know, people have different reasons for why um, they don't want to help other people. One of my mentors, she says her 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 uh, nonprofit organization, God's Woman of Purpose. The 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 motto is, as I climb, I pull. You know, so right, if, right. if if I'm up here, there's always going to be somebody below me, but I'm going to help them come up too, you know. And, and to have that mentality in any shape or form or fashion, you have to be secure and you have to be, um, um, I don't know, motivated by love, specifically when it comes to sisters. You know, when I think about, I had a really good conversation with a, a older sister in the church. Uh, this past Sunday, and she said that she had been praying because I'm new at my congregation, and mm-hmm. she had been praying about uh, the way God would use me in that congregation, you know. And I told her, I said, I pray about it too. I, I know when I made my transition here, I ha- I was okay with going from being a senior in high school to being a kindergartner again because people have to know you. They have to learn you, you know, mm-hmm. and I was okay with this transition. But I said, but since I've been in the body and since God has called me into ministry, uh, I've gotten that feel where, you know, I've I've had those older sisters that will say, well, I'm not coming to your class because, uh, in essence, I'm not getting what I need from y'all. You know, but it's really not about mm. that. It's about the fact that I'm a younger woman, I'm respected, right. and right. you're not, you're not, you don't have that same, people don't esteem you the same way. So there's that spirit of competition. There's that spirit of, of um, uh, insecurity or whatever it is. Mm. But people have different reasons, you know, but that, that, yeah, I, I don't know what else I want to add to that. I think I was venting a little bit. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> No, no, that's good. Right, right. That's good. You know, Mm -hmm. because I I go around and I teach in the sisterhood a lot, right, Um, one of the things I Mm -hmm. share with Tressa, I I never wanted to be a speaker. Everybody who know me, know me for real, for real, they'll tell you, this girl, (laughs) I 
am anti speaker all day long. Everybody knows that about me. <laughs> but I am I am gifted and anointed and I, I I'm not saying that cocky, this is just a fact for right. matter. I never want I never wanted any of that. I, I didn't want mm-hmm. I was happy teaching at my little congregation and minding my business, okay? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you know, one of the things I was telling Trust about is that I didn't realize how political the sisterhood can be when you go to places and speak. Um, and, and, and one of the things that I've seen is, is, is that now, now of course, everybody knows Sister Ira. I, Sister Ira, the best. I, I love Sister Ira like nobody <laughs> because Amen. not all she not only will she teach some of these brothers under the table, but the level to which she ministers to younger sisters is so uh, profound. Yeah. It, it brings uh-huh. tears to my eyes. But one of the things uh-huh. I've learned from her. Is this is that? Listen, she tells me this all the time. She said, "If I go, if I die tomorrow, I know the sisterhood gonna be in good hands with some of y'all younger sisters." It was. It's uh, never about not sharing the spotlight. And I've worked with other yeah. sisters who are in her same her same caliber who 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 have shunned me or acted as if I'm. Yep. I'm like, listen, man, I don't even want to be here. I'm here because the Lord says so. If it was up to me, I'd be in my house, I, in my bed, <laughs> binge watching my TV shows. I'm not here <laughs> for you, okay? But what Amen. I've learned is that people think that their position, right, right, they think that if 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 I mentor her and she starts teaching more than me or people start asking her to come more than me, then that means that she's going to take my spot. Baby, uh-huh. this, you don't understand that ain't none of this hours anyway. We ain't nothing Ooh. but servants of the Lord. And when God, oh, when, when God <laughs> told them, he says, listen, he said, uh-huh. I will raise up rocks. It, he don't need you. Amen. He don't need me. Well, he don't need none of us. And the mere fact that people think that that so much of themselves that they stand in the that. way of other people walking in uh, ministry right. and doing what God has called them to do, I believe that they are going to be judged for that. We have got to get away of thinking that because that whole mentality is all about protecting what you think your own air, what you think you own, what you think you're entitled to, and you're not entitled to nothing but that. That's it. That's all we got. Well, right. You know, this, this right. ain't our platform. These are not these are not our, our ladies' days. This is about God. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. Right. right. And ladies, I we have uh, actually got just a very uh, few minutes left, <laughs> so. It, this has definitely been a good conversation. I've enjoyed um, actually listening. <laughs> I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't talk a whole lot, but I, I did enjoy listening to the conversation. Um, but one thing before we close, one thing that um, I did make note of, and I mean it was a lot, but one thing I made note of is something that. Um, Tressa said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but we're not responsible to take care of each other, but we are responsible for caring for each other and giving life to each other. And so that is something that I want to leave with our listening audience, something that maybe you can take with you through the week. Um, I pray that tonight's show encouraged everyone who's listening. Uh, it encouraged me. Um, I Again, I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity to share another conversation uh, with you. I want to thank Brother Stevie B for allowing a talk with my sisters to be a part of What a Word from the Lord radio show. I truly appreciate it. Uh, this show was not designed for me to do it alone. Uh, but rather to share a conversation with other women. So with that said, I want to thank uh, Tressa and Katrina for their straightforward and honest thoughts on the topic. Uh, I I am definitely grateful for your willingness to share your knowledge and to be a part of the show. Um, If you would like to be a guest on future shows, please feel free to email me at atalkwmsisters at gmail.com. That's all one word. Again, a talk, WM sisters at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for participating. And I'll turn it over to Brother Stevie B. I'm a soldier in the
To what a word from the Lord radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's word. I want to thank uh, Kelly Fletcher for her show tonight and her guest, uh, Teresa, Teresa Joe Franklin and Katrina Brown. That was a great uh, conversation that they had in regards uh, to responsibility to one another. I just appreciate their efforts on this show. I'm looking forward to uh, this new production with Kelly Fletcher because she has some interesting topics 
that she will be discussing on her uh, broadcast. What a blessing. What a blessing it is, baby, to hear uh, information like this being put out on a Tuesday night. It's my prayer that these lessons and the things that were uh, discussed on the show this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you're not only tuning in this broadcast, but you're giving yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. And on behalf of my co-hosts, Isa Mullen, Shana Otis, and Luke Gibbs, and Kelly Fletcher, we really do appreciate your love and support for these programs. I'm your host, Steve R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Validation is just another vapor in the wind that's fading. It's just another treasure that the world is seeking. Just a little praise, just to feel okay. But chasing after love is not a life worth living. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show, episode 211. Um.